from Provo, Utah, this is the Ultimate Final Fantasy Podcast with your hosts, Joseph DeGolier and Caleb Schweiss. This is Ultima Final Fantasy. Welcome to another episode of Ultima Final Fantasy, the ultimate Final Fantasy podcast. I am your host, Caleb Schweiss. And I am your other host, Joseph DeGolier. Oh, yeah. And this week, we will be uh, catching up on stuff, because <laughs> I have nothing planned. You have nothing planned at all? No, and you know what? You know what I say about that? Real heroes don't need plans. Yes. I get what you're saying. <laughs> it took me a second to find the stupid thing. <laughs> It's yep. like, which one of these icons is it? All right, so we are now implementing drops yes. into the show. This is an exciting time of experimentation and the overuse of drops, such as... I'm Captain Bosch von Ronsenberg of Dalmaska. <laughs> Things like that. Yes. <laughs> anyway, so, uh, Schweiss, do we have any iTunes reviews? Oh, we... Oh, wait, no, we don't. No, we don't have any iTunes reviews. Hey, uh, hey, you guys! Um... If you please uh, leave us an iTunes review, if you have not already, even if you have, go ahead and sign on to your sisters uh, <laughs> or brothers or a- anybody, any sibling really. <laughs> Just like log on to their uh, Apple iTunes profile and uh, go ahead and give us a five star review, and uh, we'll be glad to read it on the show. Of course, I mean, and as we've said before, it helps us out when we have more ratings and reviews especially i mean even if nothing else it helps us on the inside helps boost that ego that we (laughs) that we have so it's great we have this huge ego and we need to keep it going you guys yeah it's dying oh man all right so oh man (laughs) you're right there (laughs) yeah i'm all right Kayla, where are you in 10 right now um i am same place as i was before actually just uh mindlessly grinding away and (laughs) <laughs> James laughing at you. Yeah, that's how it feels, yes. Oh, man, I am doing the exact same thing you are. Yeah? I did have uh, I did have Caleb here cheat for me and uh, get the Chocobo time in, in zero seconds. He could not do it on my TV. Yeah. Let's be clear here. Uh, it, it might be my TV that makes it impossible for me to do that. I honestly sat there at least... Eight hours of my week was spent on that Chocobo thing. I could not get zero. Yeah. I could not get the zero time. And then Schweiss came over and tried it for what? You were on there for like three hours, weren't you? Yeah, it was a while. On my TV, and, and I then, do it then I just TV. had him switch over to the other TV, and then he did it. Yeah, like third try. He's like, it must it must be my TV, because I, I got a pretty big TV. It's like a, it's either a 50 or 55 inch TV. Yeah, and, and yours so, is plasma too. So. And it's plasma. It's not really about the plasma thing, but I think it might because be. it's a bigger TV. It's 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 rate is going to be a little slower uh, as far as you know your input into the, <laughs> into the game versus what comes out on the television screen. Yeah, I don't know though. It looks different too. Like yours, it doesn't necessarily look worse. Although sometimes it does. Uh, yours is more for movies, I think, and the game looks crisper. Right, I have a pla- I don't have an LCD. I have a I have a plasma screen, so it is for movies. It's got a higher color range. It doesn't have any motion blur. Yeah, uh, <laughs> which is the thing I bought it for because I hate looking at LCD screens. I know most of you guys out there cannot see motion blur, but some of us can. I can see it too, and it's really annoying. But yeah, my- but none of our friends can. I, I, Isn't I, uh, it weird when you go over to like someone's big screen house and you're like, that picture does not look right. Yeah, it just looks wrong. Yeah, it's it just like, it just looks really odd. It doesn't look like it's 24 frames per second, which is what it's supposed to be looking yeah, like. But my TV is only like a, was it like 25, maybe 30? The smaller the TV, even if you have a lower refresh rate, it's not going to blur as much. Yeah, so but mine, if you have a big TV, it shows, especially yeah. if you know what you're looking for. Yeah, so mine doesn't have any motion blur, so that might have been part of it just the picture difference mm-hmm. and the i don't know the fact that it's quicker i don't know but yeah. i was able to do it on mine the only time i can't see motion blur is with those with the actual refresh rate is 240 hertz which n- hardly anyone has an actual 240 hertz tv everybody has like 120 and then on the packaging of the 120 tv it'll say like 
super blah 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 240 but that doesn't actually mean it's 240 hertz that's just the label that they put on it because they're oh, making up for it to make the tv cheaper oh yeah so well, no one be. yeah I, I i did a lot of research before buying my big screen television that's why i was like you know what i can't afford the ultra hds which do look good and they don't have any motion blur um but those lcds that are available they suck <laughs> Like a real 240 hertz LCD screen is really expensive. So I like the way they look a little more though. But at least uh, for the they're choker, brighter. Though. They're brighter. They're probably better for games. But they they look more precise. Like the I don't know. It looks cleaner. Yours is kind of messy. Uh, yours is just high, like high high bright and high contrast. That's it. Yeah, like yeah. smooth. I can make my TV look like that. It just doesn't. Well, you should. Make I can it mess that with maybe the set. Maybe you would have been able. It doesn't to do look. The it doesn't race. look good on a, on a movie. That kind of stuff. It just makes it look like it's not. It's supposed to. I want it to look like what it looked like in the theater, like you know the high. There's a big color range and whatever. Anyway, we're talking. We're going off subject, Caleb. Anyway, you got a trophy for me, so I cheated my ass off. And and one of these days, I wish to come over here on your PlayStation and just prove that I can do it. Yeah. Yeah. We'll see. Okay. We'll, we'll let you guys know what happens. All right. Uh, probably won't. Eh, it might be sometime soon. Not sure. <laughs> All right, Schweiss. Um, shall we go to the news as soon as I can find the stupid thing? Okay, we really need like a little keyboard with all these things set up on it. That would be easier, yeah. Yeah, it would be easier. I gotta, I gotta look into getting one of those. Let's At see. least we remembered it this week, though. <laughs> we are going to remember news this week. News, news, news. All right, so Shinru on our forum was nice enough to get get us a whole list of news. There was some stories that were like uh, fan news and stuff like that that you guys can definitely look up. Uh, another piece of news it looks like there was a the art director of some of the Final Fantasy games. Yasuke Naora, he did a lecture, uh, and it's <laughs> at SMU Guildhall, uh, where he talked about the visual evolution of the Final Fantasy series, and uh, so you guys can uh, go on there and listen to the lecture. It's like two hours long, um, so that'll be interesting. I have not listened to it yet, but I saw Shinra's link, and I'm like, you know, when I'm at work, I'm going to be listening to that. I nice. Think. Yeah, it looks pretty interesting. Yeah. Uh, there is some news about Mevious Final Fantasy. Yeah, apparently they shared some uh, gameplay footage. Yeah, some gameplay footage and some information on the story. So I'm just going to read this. This is from Silicon Era. Most of these stories are. Uh, this is the prologue story for Mevious Final Fantasy. The world is not your home. You are a human who is born and raised on a different planet. You may have experienced countless battles up until now. However, you no longer remember anything. After losing your memories, you floated to the world of Palamitia. <laughs> uh, let's see. Pala, Palamitia? Probably. It sounds like Chlamydia. Okay. <laughs> In addition to yourself, there are numerous other foreigners that drifted their way here. Since all of your pasts are empty... We simply, you the blanks. <laughs> this is badly translated. Yeah. So we call you blanks. <laughs> to replace the, plas the past you've lost, you all have futures. This is the prophecy that is told in Palamidia. One day, a hero of light will appear and bring hope to the world. This world has been invaded by a demonic army led by chaos. Nice. And it is said that one blank will destroy the demons and save the planet. One of the blanks, perhaps even you, you blank piece of shit, may be the hero of light. Fight for the future and restore hope to Palamidia. <laughs> and then uh, you got some looks at some key characters here. Wall. Uh, which is the protagonist you can change the name of. Sarah Lott Cornelia, who's a princess. Looks like she needs to pee. Mog, who, of course... Uh, he's a is, badass. Yeah, he's a, he's <laughs> Mog. <laughs> nice. All right, so there's some good news there. That's that's going to be out for mobile phones, I believe, in August. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Yeah. Nice. Probably won't play it, but honestly, the... Uh, 
We'll, we'll bring this up later. Never mind. All right. So there's also a Final Fantasy 15. I have no idea what you're talking about. Uh, the game you can't, released, you can't just... the mobile game they released, Ghostly, that freaking record keeper. Oh yeah, record keeper came out. Yeah, I yeah. didn't download it because my phone's memory stick is too small. <laughs> it's huge. All right. So there's a Final Fantasy 15 episode disque survey. Yeah, you need to have your little demo number that you got with your game. Really? Yeah. I wonder if we should just do in that. order to do the survey. I got my demo thingy. Do you? Yeah. Yeah, we can do that. Give me a second here. Okay, I'll give you a second. I'll talk some more about some other stuff. Um, it is your, well, it was your last chance to upgrade Final Fantasy XIV from PS3 to PS4 for free, uh, but that was only good until uh, the 1st of April, and now that it is past that, uh, unfortunately, you will now have to pay to play Final Fantasy XIV on PS4. So you Final Fantasy XIV players who were hoping on switching, sorry, it's too late. Sorry we forgot to do news last week. We could have yeah, saved you. We would have, but we have now <laughs> forsaken you. All right, so some other sad news. Such such sad, sad news. Yeah, apparently Type Zero didn't do so well in Japan. And by didn't do so well, we mean did really, really bad. Really fucking poorly. So uh, just just to give you a little uh, little bit of, uh, uh, you know, numbers here. Uh, it sold in 2011 when it came out for the PSP in Japan. At launch, it sold 472,253 uh, copies at launch. So that's almost 80% of the shipment that they had made okay. by the time it came out. Yeah. Now, what did the PS4 and Xbox One versions of the game sell? 93,000. 93,000 copies. And the Xbox version was 1,000. Oh. <laughs> it was only 1,000 units of that. Wow. Xbox is not very popular in Japan. I don't even know why they're selling it over there. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> it's probably not region locked. I don't know. Maybe it is region locked. I have no idea. I don't see why they would. It's like, well, if no one's buying it anyway. Might as well just be universal one version. Anyway, so that's that's some sad news. Not sure how much how much it sold elsewhere. Uh, probably much more, or else this article uh, would be useless because it'd be like you know what, everywhere is horrible. But <laughs> the the big reason behind that is because they already had the game, honestly, mm -hmm. and it's HD, quote unquote, but it's not super super HD. So, eh. All right. So if you guys, Shinru say, uh, also gave us a couple of other links that are interesting, but they're not really news. Um, Silicon Era met with uh, Kazuyuki Ikimori, the director of uh, Visual Works, uh, which is they're they're part of or they're a big part of making Advent Children and Final Fantasy XV's mm -hmm. cutscenes. So if you guys uh, want to read that, there's a big long interview on Silicon Era that you put up. Just look in the news section; you'll be able to find it from uh, from Shinru there. Uh, <laughs> but now now we're got a. Uh, now we got we got to do the survey, shall we? Yeah, let's try it. Okay, so PS4, right? Yep. Okay. Enter your code, Schweiss. You yeah. got to go over there and enter the code. Schweiss is now entering his code. He is having problems typing. Okay, now he's now he's figured it out. He's figured out that he has to put his fingers on the keys and that'll make numbers and letters show up okay so we got the code in pressing the submit button please use the path word, the path word uh, <clears throat> to access the survey so you got to put in the password Schweiss is putting in their password to get into the survey what uh, did you spell behemoth right yeah I did okay that Oh, click on that. Click on it one more time. Did you put a capital B? I did. What? Check your data and try again. What? Hold on. Copy. Paste. You spelled it wrong, you dick. No, I didn't. <laughs> I was looking right at it. It wants us to copy and paste it. Okay. Do you want Google Chrome to save your password? Sure. 
Hi there! For everyone who has played the Final Fantasy XV demo, we have opened this survey so you could pro provide feedback on your experience. The information you provide will be shared with the Final Fantasy XV development team. This survey should only take 10 to 15 minutes to complete. We really want to hear from you and welcome all feedback. As a thank you to everyone who completes the survey, we will be sending you a wallpaper, especially designed by the development team. If you haven't had a chance to play the demo yet, please come back later for this to this page. <laughs> Dumb shit. Have you played the demo? Yes. Yes, yes, we have played the demo. Before you played the demo, what interested you about Final Fantasy? Please rank the top three. Schweiss, this is your code. Okay. What's number what's the number one reason you wanted to play that 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 interested you in Final Fantasy 15? Um, probably the top one. It is the new numbered Final Fantasy game. And there you go. Second, okay, the second reason. I like all Final Fantasy games, which is kind of a lie, but we'll okay. go with that. You sure? You don't like the graphics, the car, the story, no. the characters? Okay, I, I don't like, know anything about I like all Final that. Fantasy games. All right. The music. The music is number th Yeah, the music is fucking good. It is. For that demo. Jeez okay. Louise. All right, so those are your top three. Okay. Oh, good God. Following your time playing the demo, please rate the following components in the demo where 10 is the highest and 1 is the lowest. World design, artistic direction of things, terrain, monsters, etc. I'd probably go like 7. 7, okay. Open world gameplay, 10. 10. Super open world. Main character design, uh... What the fuck? 6... Like, if you Fine. gave it a bad rating, would they change the character design? Okay. I don't know. Sub-character design, 10, because it's Cindy. <laughs> uh, <laughs> map design, I'd give it an 8. You'd give map design an 8. How much did you like the main character's personality? He didn't. Um, do 5, do neutral. He didn't have that many lines or anything like that. Yeah, that's why I can't really give it a... How much did you like Ignis's personality? 6. 6. Promptos. Promptos. Six, I guess. Prompto was the annoying one. It's he was still kind of funny, though. Yeah. He was funny. Gladiolus. Gladiolus, I believe. Wait, Ignis. Is Ignis the guy with the British accent? I think so. Okay. Gladiolus is the guy who sounded just like Noctis. Like, they both had a very similar voice. I'd each give other. them the same. Just around a six. Like, it a doesn't six. really give us any okay. weapon it's design. It's just a demo. I mean, Let's go nine. They were pretty sweet. Okay. Graphic yeah. quality, ten. Looked great, even though it's not max. Controls, uh, did they respond how I expected? Yeah, let's go eight. Yeah, you like the controls? A lot of people are complaining about the controls of the lock-on system. I thought it was fine. Yeah, I thought it was fine, too. I don't know what's the problem. Navigation there. relating to progress through the game. 10 is easy to navigate, 1 is difficult and rough to navigate. 7? Seven. 7? Yeah. Tutorial. 10 equals a clear and straightforward tutorial, 1 is unclear or too complex. 5. 5. It was retarded. But <laughs> okay. Battle system, 8. 8, yeah. That was good. Caleb liked the battle system quite a bit. Amount and variety of content. How many things there are to do? Let's go 6. 6. It's a demo, but still. Game difficulty? 10, great. Let's go 8. eight. It was pretty balanced. Okay. But there were some parts where I was like, God, this is ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> Event scenes. Non-interactive scenes with character dialogue and story sequences. Uh, I'll go 8. I'll go 8. Interesting. Story. How enjoyable did you find the story slash scenario that took place? 6. Okay. Music, 10. It was great. Okay. Voice acting. Uh, I'll go like 7. Yeah, was, I didn't think it was bad. No, we didn't character either. dialogue. The things that the characters say, not the way they say it, which is voice acting. Thank you for clarifying that, Square Enix. Um, I'll go six. Go six. All right, that's sixy. Overall feedback of the demo? Out of ten? Nine. You're going to give it a nine out of ten. Yeah, that's pretty Ooh. sweet. Did you complete the demo? Yes. Yes. Will you play the demo again after you have completed it? I already have. Didn't you? So definitely. Okay. I walked around. I already played the demo again. That is another option. Okay. All right. Have you already stopped playing the demo? Yep. Yep. 
Please give your reasons why you decided to stop playing the demo. Um, uh, aren't you? That middle one. I have played all of the content and I'm fully satisfied. Yes. Okay. I just killed the behemoth okay. again and I was like, that's Yeah, it. Same, same with me. That's what I did. How close an impression of the final, of final, final, of the final Final Fantasy fifteen game, <laughs> do you think that the, that the demo gives you? Um, general. General impression. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it's probably gonna be a lot better and more smooth. Okay. But has how has your playing the demo influenced your decision to get the Final Fantasy fifteen game when it's released? We'll definitely buy. We'll definitely not buy. necessarily because of the demo, but the demo didn't hurt. So. Would you? Will probably buy. If you didn't already have to play it for a podcast? Yeah. Okay. Because that was another... Okay. To what effect... I would have definitely bought it anyway. Yeah. Me. <laughs> to what effect did the demo being included with Final Fantasy Type-0 HD influence your decision to get Final Fantasy Type-0 <laughs> This demo was the reason. Okay. This demo was the reason is the top answer. And is that the one that you... Yeah. Okay. That's what I thought. It should have one that... I have a podcast. Yeah. <laughs> I have a podcast. <laughs> other yeah how did you find out about this demo uh, uh fuck how did we find out about this demo online advertising probably was it online advertising or was it youtube youtube actually yeah we'll give it to youtube good yeah. job google yeah okay which sources of information about the demo were the most effective in your decision to get this okay uh, we got screenshots packaging print advertising 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 YouTube advertising youtube okay there we go youtube rank number two screenshots screenshots saw some sweet ones at the rank number with. three packaging um, footage gaming magazine article yeah website article website article where's that right down below second to the bottom okay, there you go there we go Yes. What oh, fun? yes. This is what Final Fantasy beast. games have you played? There's played have you completed? and completed. And oh yeah, okay. baby. The first. Okay, I, I can. You've completed Final Fantasy, Final Fantasy two, Final Fantasy three, Final Fantasy four, Final Fantasy five. <laughs> All right. This is oh, where okay. I get to feel awesome. Final Fantasy six, Final Fantasy seven, Final Fantasy eight, Final Fantasy nine, Final Fantasy ten. Not eleven. Though. Not eleven. But have you played it at all? How much have you played it? I haven't touched it. Okay, I'm the one. I've played it a little bit. Okay, I won't touch it. You've completed Final Fantasy twelve. Played You've thirteen. Played thirteen. Played You've fourteen. Played fourteen. Wait, no. Oh wait, you didn't play the original four. Why you? They have fourteen and a Realm Reborn as two separate options. Okay. Okay. So you've played a Realm Reborn. Played Tactics. Okay. Any? Have you played any of the Tactics series? Yeah. I haven't beat. Have it, you though. completed? It? Okay. Crisis Core. Yep. Beat. Beat. Any of the Dissidia? Nope. I touched them. Not touched them at all. Or Chocobo. Or Chocobo. Or Theater Rhythm. Or, oh, no, no you, have. you played it. Okay. None of the above. What? Next. <laughs> Completed none of the above. Okay. Yes. And just deny everything else he clicked. Okay. What games do you like? Do you like action games? Yep. Do you like adventure games? Yep. Do you like role-playing games? Yep. Do you like to role-play in bed? Yep. Uh, why, did, why did they ask that question? That's so weird. Okay, Matt. <laughs> do you like MMORPGs? Yep. First-person shooters? Yep. <laughs> Sports games. Yes. You like sports games? Yeah. I've never seen you play one. Play do you like racing games? games? Not really. Okay. Do you like strategy games such as Civilization, Puzzle Games, Candy uh, Crush? Yeah. <laughs> I like Bejeweled. Yeah. Stealth, yes. Stealth, yes. Metal Gear? Horror, yes. Horror? And Simulation. And yeah. simu Stimulation. That's what yeah. I mean. <laughs> okay. What are your favorite three game genres? RPG. RPG? Action. Action? Wait, no, no, no. Okay, no, no, no. RPG, first-person shooter. First-person shooter. And strategy. Strategizzle. Not in that order, necessarily. Depends. Okay, what's this one? Okay. Game systems do you own? Game systems do you plan on getting? Okay, twice do you own a, play you own a PlayStation 4? Yep. You own a PlayStation 3? You do not plan on purchasing, I assume. Do you plan on purchasing an Xbox One? No, 360 probably. You plan on purchasing a 360? Yes. It's a little late. <laughs> 3DS plan. Plan. Nothing for DS. PSP already own. Already own. Vita. No. No? We. Not unless there's a fucking no. Final Fantasy game that's only available on it. We already have. Already have a Wii. PC you have, have a PC. You do not need. have a Mac. Okay. 
Oh. Uh, give us any other thoughts that you. Is there anything else you want to know about the no, demo? Just skip this. Skip it? Yeah. Okay. What's your country of residence? Canada, no. Okay. United States. How old are you, Schweiss? Just Please enter select it. your age. Is that one? No. Or is that one? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, I don't remember how old you are. Uh, you are a male. Oh, what type of communication would you like to see with the development teams going forward? I like, uh, well, I'm not going to answer for you. A survey like this, Caleb? Um, Do you want to see more surveys? A well, forum with registered they, users? A survey if they give me stuff. I mean, okay. Creation and operation of a supporters club? An event where the developers and users interact? Frequent video releases like the active time report? Yeah. Okay. And those two, that's it. Okay. Is that it? Well, it just ended. Huh. Oh, oh okay. okay, there we go. <laughs> Your feedback has been submitted. Thank you for taking the time to complete this survey. Your opinions and support are extremely important to us. Please oh, click the, the link below to choose out of three designs. Okay. All right, let's see what this is. Select your wallpaper. Okay, there's one where he's grabbing his crotch. There's another. <laughs> Let's go with the first one. You have downloaded. I bet you I could have gotten those anyway. Wallpaper. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm sure of it. All right. Well, that was fun. Yeah. We went. We filled out a survey together. I love. I Wasn't love that those, great? Uh, <laughs> yeah. Let's review the survey. Okay. <laughs> Well, I thought the survey was a little lacking in, in some the story. Yeah, yeah was... the story wasn't that great. All right. So our last piece of news is that uh, you know Tabana's talking a little bit about maybe some female uh, characters joining the party. As like a yeah. partial So here, here's the quote join. here. Here's a quote here. Uh, There's a chance that we may have female characters participate as guests in the party, said Tabata. Since the party is made up of only men, you might even get to see their behavior change when there's a lady around. That's kind of funny. <laughs> that kind of, uh, oh, there might be, but... Uh, it, means it's gonna happen. it means it's going to happen. They don't yeah. know what subtlety is. Okay. Let's face it. <laughs> And then he's talking about the, uh, I think he's talking about the survey a little bit here. The demo's battle system is around 50% in terms of progress also. Uh, the director responded, uh, we'd like to thoroughly respond to the improvement requests. The full version will feature new elements such as magic and cooperative change. So I believe it will be completely different. Hmm. Yeah, it'll yeah. probably feel similar though. Yeah. I feel like probably. they know what they want to do. They just need to add the rest of it. Yeah. So uh, that's, uh, that is our news. Sweet. For today. I'm just going to click out of all this stuff here. All right. Let's see. All right, Schweiss, uh, what segment should we do first, you think? Um, Let's do some tactics. Let's do some tactics? Yeah. All right. When you start on a boss, you just can't be. So this tactic comes from Shinru on our forum. It's a Final Fantasy X tactic, uh, which we've talked about this a little bit, but we'll yeah. let Shinru explain this. All right. So he says, this only works on the FF10 HD version, if you recall us correctly. He hasn't tried it on the original one. This is, of course, defeating everything with Yojimbo, which, of course, we scrolled down and I couldn't read that part. But <laughs> basically, you get Yojimbo as soon as you can. Okay. He has a special attack called Zanmato that insta-kills an enemy, or enemy's form, okay, by cutting them in half. This attack can even work on bosses and optional bosses in the game, oh yes, like the Dark Aeons and Penance, for some examples. Mm -hmm. Trick to get Zanmato to uh, trigger more often is to always pay Yojimbo 1,024 gil, or anything two times, three times, four times, etc., that price... Uh, 124, 1024 raises the chance of him doing that attack quite a bit, and uh, each increment of 120 or 1024 only increases the chance. 
For some reason, it's the perfect amount to trigger it. I don't know. I don't know why, but every guide says that. Yeah. Uh, no one knows why. It's, just, uh, it's a mathematical thing, apparently. Huh. Uh, so, and also make sure to keep his compatibility high, which is very important because every time I got to a new boss that I was like, mm, I'm just going to Zen Moto. I would go out and try, and he'd be like, uh, Watashi wa, or whatever the hell he does, and he just <laughs> gets his ass kicked, you know? Wak- and Wakazashi? I don't know what it's Wakatashi, called. Wakatashi. Yeah, shit. it's not Watashi wa. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so yeah, make sure you keep his compatibility high. Apparently it starts at 128, and it can go down. <coughs> it can go down if you dismiss him without paying Excuse him, me. if he's KO'd, or if someone, if you summon and dismiss him immediately... Um, and if he uses Daigoro to attack, and Daigoro is the one where dog. you pay less than a thousand, yeah. they're really cheap. Okay, all those things bring it down, so make sure you don't do them. If he uses Wakizashi or Zanmato and you pay him, then his compatibility rating will rise. Max is 255, and the higher it goes, the higher the chance of giving 1024 will make him use Zanmato on an enemy. Uh, this way you can easily kill tedious bosses like Dark Aeons and others in the FF10 HD international version of the game in just one hit. If it doesn't work, just keep trying or reload your save and go back and try again. Mm-hmm. You yeah. don't get a chance to retry, so you have to reload Not, not on the Dark Aeons. No. Okay. But you have used that trick, right? Oh, yeah. I used it like it was going out of style. Yeah. So I killed two of the Dark Aeons. I killed... Uh, no, three. I killed Ifrit... Valifor and Ixion legitimately. But then when I got to Shiva, she started giving me some problems. Because I wasn't doing... My luck wasn't maxed out, so I wasn't hitting her. Mm-hmm. I just kept missing, and her overdrive bar would jump. And then she would do like four attacks in a row, and then ult me. Mm-hmm. So... All right, so we got one here from Batman that's Lightning Dodger. Uh, here's a tip for dodging the required 200 lightning bolts to obtain Lulu's sigil or just to obtain the trophy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, even though you get that too, I guess. Uh, I recommend coming back to the Thunder Plains later in the game after you've collected the equipment with the Encounter Null ability as this will make the lightning dodging much easier. On the screen, just before you reach the travel agency in the Thunder Plains, of course, about midway through the area, there is a rounded alcove and the mini map to your left. The right hand side of the mini map has an area that is shaped more like a small square that juts out backward. I believe there's a cactar statue there. In this area, closer to the rounded alcove on the left, you will find a crater. Every time you approach the crater, lightning will strike. You know, you now <laughs> have control of when the lightning will strike every time. Simply walk up to the crater, press X to dodge, back away from the crater, then repeat. This is the easiest method I have found to dodging the necessary 200 bolts. So, in case, I'm, I'm pretty sure most people who've tried this probably looked up exactly where the crater is. Yeah. I mean, it's hard to tell you where it is, even with Batman's description. But it's next to one of those, um, those, those, buildings right yeah the lightning pillar tower yeah, things. yeah the lightning tower thing and there's like a little a hole on the ground where it looks like lightning is struck mm-hmm. on the ground there so you circle that hole go back towards the crater and then lightning will strike and right. that's how both of us did it yeah it's way easier yeah. way way far easier than i have around. never dodged more than two in a row outside of that i got to like 130 in one did other you? area nice yeah, it was sick and i was pissed when i lost it <laughs> That's pretty impressive, Schweiss. I'll admit. That's pretty yeah. impressive. That lightning dodging is not easy unless you do the trick. Yeah. Which, I mean, did Square Enix, <laughs> I was, did they put that area there on purpose? <laughs> um, I doubt it. <laughs> yeah, I doubt it too. So they just assumed at one point that you would just dodge that shit. Yeah, they're sick. Yeah, they're, they're sick bastards. They're... <sighs> it's tough. It's tough without the glitch, so you should try <laughs> what they're doing <laughs> all right so oh well, that's gonna be it for the tactics let's see what else we got what else we got twice uh, i think we do have a few did you know do, do we know though uh i think so but we'll do it anyway okay did you know did you know did you know my friend all this cool shit Genetic origins of the final fantasy and another you might not have known, but maybe you know, but that's okay. We're still-
still gonna do a segment called Did You Know? This one's an old one here. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> so it's this from... This was posted on January 13th. Yeah, from Artorius, a white mage who probably left because we never did this. But uh, <laughs> he says, hey guys, just finished listening to part one of your FF8 review and noticed you mentioned how you drew Eden from Ultima Weapon. But did you also know that you can actually draw Eden from Tiamat as well? Yeah. <laughs> I did, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, here's the, the, This is more of a tactic, but uh, it'll work here. Um, you can draw m- most of the summons in Final Fantasy VIII from... Most, if not all. I think it's all. It's not all. You can't get Doom Train. <laughs> uh, you can get most of the summons in Final Fantasy VIII from the enemies, like the bosses in inside the area, in, yeah. the, in the final area, in Ultimacy's Castle of Final mm-hmm. Fantasy VIII. So if you ever like miss Siren on your way or, or, or Carbuncle or something like that, when you have to fight them in the first disc, yeah. you can draw them all from that area. And I think we talked about that in part two of the Final Fantasy VIII review. Yeah, we did. But, you know, there's always a good reminder. So thank you, Artorias. It's true. Or you could be a badass and kill Ultima Weapon and get him anyway. After drawing, of course. You have, to, <laughs> you have to still draw, not just kill, which is annoying, but... Yeah. And uh, here's another thing. Here's another did you know. Uh, this one is from Batman. It's called After Years Boss Fights. There is a badass dungeon at the end of FFAY with a lot of After boss years. battles. Yes. <laughs> The further you progress. The best part about these boss battles uh, is that you may run into enemies from other entries in the FF series. Oh, cool. For example, you can fight Omega on one floor, the Phantom Train on another. It even attack- back attacks you. Nice. Even, even Ultros. Ultros. Oh, oh, God. My favorite of these boss fights was Death Gaze, the Esper you fight in the airship from FF6. And like in FF6, the only way you fight this boss is by running around and waiting to find him in a random encounter. That's wow. Impressively annoying, just like it was before. <laughs> well, that's cool, Batman. I didn't know that. I have not played After Years, admittedly. I yeah, not, neither of us have. I have not so. touched it. But uh, that's that's some cool uh, you know, referencing right there. I think because of what I'm doing with FF10, I may have to just dominate every other Final Fantasy game from this point on, except for... Well, there's no trophies in the other stuff, though. Dude, I'm going to be so mad when we play through 12 and I do almost everything extra in 12 and then they come out with an HD release of 12 with trophies. (laughs) I'm going to be like, fuck! (laughs) I'm going to be so mad about that. I get it. I get it. (laughs) Do you think you're going to plan them in this week? Uh, I think so. I think think I could do it, yeah. Oh. It's a lot, but that is a lot. Jeez Louise, dude. I'm I'm impressed. I don't think I'm gonna be able to platinum it by the time we have a review episode next week. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there's plenty of time afterwards. <laughs> Alright, twice, let's spot some Final Fantasies. Ooh, yes, yeah. <laughs> That was a really rough transition into that. <laughs> yeah? Yeah, I'm going to have to change that music file to, like, fit so that I can just click on it and it'll go. All right, so we got a Borderlands reference. Uh, it's apparently referencing Final Fantasy. This one comes from Crimson Command, who is a samurai with Giltas on her form. Uh, so there are two... Uh, that I've heard of, and this, and one of them is a stretch. Uh, he says, in Borderlands 2, during Tiny Tina's assault on Dragon Keep, one revived, the new U station says, Consider me your own personal Phoenix Down. Uh, this is the clearest one, he says. That's okay. one of the references. And I, I looked for a clip. And I couldn't find one, but uh, I'm going to believe Crimson Command here. <laughs> All right. And uh, it says another one here from. Uh, from Borderlands 2. Uh, there is a challenge to get badass ranks with the title A Squall of Violence, where you have to kill enemies with a bladed gun. <laughs> this one might be a stretch, but it's cool regardless. I, I think, don't think that one is a stretch. I think the other one's a stretch. This one's the one that's legit. Yeah. 
That sounds like it. Like you got a bladed gun and then it's, you know, a squall of violence. Yeah, I think that's yeah. a direct reference to eight. That's cool. Yeah, that is cool. So when I play Borderlands 2. Makers of, Mortar, makers of Borderlands 2 are a fan of Final Fantasy. It is an RPG yeah. of sorts. <laughs> All right. And this one comes from Light Sage. And uh, I'm not going to read this whole thing here, but she uh, she's level 99 on the forum. Oh, nice, nice. And she has a picture of Ramu, the summon. In 15. Uh, from Final Fantasy 15. And if you notice, his staff is is kind of... It's kind of shaped like that uh, Final Fantasy X symbol, the, the Titus or uh, uh, or Jet symbol. You know, like the T sort of weird thing, symbol? It's like a cross. Yeah? Yeah. You see it at the top of his uh, his staff? A little bit. What yeah. they're talking about mostly is the Ixion horn at the end. Though. Yeah, the Ixion horn is there too. That's what I think looks more like anything. You think it looks more like an Ixion horn? Well, look at the top of it. It's well, yeah, I see, the, I see the Ixion horn thing. Just so she's saying it, it might be a reference to Final Fantasy Ten stuff. Yeah, yeah, I see the Exion horn. I I do think it looks like the symbol from Ten though, that first symbol that pops up. Yeah, it does yeah, look the like thing that on, on 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 uh, Titus's necklace. Sorry, Light Sage was talking about Exion. I was talking about that. All right. Well, those are some cool uh, spot the FFs. But of course, uh, we're really here for just one one segment, aren't we, Schweiss? Of course, the ultimate. The ultimate segment called. So we got quite a few questions here. Are we going to get through all of these today? Um, we're going to try. We're going to try. All right. Well, <laughs> Dirge of Cerberus, Secret Ending, Romance, and Final Fantasy, Final Fantasy Cafe. Are you sure we're going to get through all of these? There's a lot. Maybe. Uh, okay. All right. Well, I'm just going to, instead of doing them in order, we're just going to click on them at random here. <laughs> because we're trying to clear these out before our Final Fantasy X uh, review. Okay, this one comes from Void. All right, this one's titled, Which Type Zero Character? This is funny. Final Fantasy Type Zero has an official quiz that will tell you which Type Zero character you are. I thought it would be fun for you guys to take the quiz and let us know next time you do on the show. You might want to highlight some of the questions, too. They're pretty funny. I'd also be pretty interested in seeing what other forum members get. I took the quiz, and apparently I'm seven. Okay, so, so Void is seven. All right, let's start this quiz. Which member of Class Zero are you? Are you a? Are, is your hero a boy or a girl? Uh, is your hero <laughs> a guy? I guess a guy gets it done. My guy gets it done. Depends on their story. How about we toss a coin or a female for the win? As far as your hero, guy gets it done. Guy who gets it done. All right. This is me. This is my story. Okay. <laughs> Listen to my story. All right. Mighty name, sword. Name your tool of destruction. A mighty sword, uh, guns, 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 <laughs> daggers drawn, or by the power of magic. You say a mighty sword? Yeah, let's be generic. Okay. Uh, tug on my mighty How is your hair looking today? Uh, <laughs> bald. Sorry. <laughs> I'm not that bald, you prick. The, <laughs> the choices are long and luxurious. There's a lot of us doing fucking quizzes today yeah it's true. <laughs> freaky kind of like me short with bangs <laughs> not that one smart and sensible uh let's go freaky it's a little messy right now okay all right messy like me okay teamwork to you means i'm always first in line i've always got your six let the others take the heat or make me the cheerleader um i've got your six i guess i've got your six man sixy how do you come out fighting? Melee to your face, strategically from a distance, fizzling with magic, or doctor in the house? Let's go melee to your face. Be melee direct. to your face? All right. What would my report card say? Incredibly studious. Short attention span? Works well with others? Expelled. Expelled. <laughs> 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 
You need to make a good impression. How do you dress? The best in class, and not just in school. I dress to express my personality. I woke up with this. Flawless. Uniforms are a necessary evil. Um, personality, I guess. Personality? You dress well, to express suck. your personality? I wear my Metallica hoodie sometimes. <laughs> All of these answers are shit. Uniforms like, are a necessary evil? Sure. Okay. Yeah. There you go. That one's just as true. All right. Who, Who or what do you fight for? Glory and the pride of my country. Making sure I'm rewarded for my efforts. I fight for the sheer hell of it. Hey, I'm a lover, not a fighter. Ooh, he's Money. my lover. Money? <laughs> yep, rewarded. All right. Rewarded. Where's that? Where's that? Where's that? Second on the left. Making sure I'm rewarded. Oh, Jesus. Okay. Well, it just got smaller for me. <laughs> Have you ever been in love? I'm in love <laughs> right now. I'm telling everyone. I wish. Sniff. Psh, warriors need hard hearts to win. And uh, the last answer is mind your own business. Mind your own business. Yeah, mind your own fucking business. How do you handle fear? <coughs> do you fear my handle? What is this word fear you speak of? <laughs> Look for the nearest exit. Swallow hard, grit my teeth, and get on with the job. <laughs> ah! Kind of like your I girlfriend. I chortle <laughs> at terror behind its back. Okay. Um, what is this word fear you speak of? Oh, really? Yeah. That's how you see yourself. What is your ideal companion? A moogle? Even the name is cute. A mammoth. I love those little guys. As a Final Fantasy classicist, it has to be a chocobo. Bahamut. I don't think I have time to mess around. Uh, I'm going to go with Bahamut. I mean, he, come on. If he can be, yeah. Fuck yeah. How do you prefer to approach a mission? Um, Run through them as fast as I can. Slow and methodical. Leave no stone unturned. Only happy when I'm OP. I like to extend the pleasure slow and steady. Run through as fast as I can. Really? Yeah. I thought you were only happy when you're OP. <coughs> During recess, you'll find me stuffing my face in the canteen, in the playground, messing about with friends, in the library, polishing an apple for teacher. Ooh. Yeah. I want to polish the teacher's apple. Out of sight, That's pretty hot. but making plans. Let's go with out of sight. Out of sight, but making plans. All right. In my lunchbox, you'll find... Roasted meat, plus all the trimmings. Lunch is for wimps, vegetable sandwiches, no crusts, chips, <laughs> chocolate, and a sword, just in case. Probably that one. Like a little sword that you put in your sandwich? Yeah. <laughs> That'd be awesome. Just a little pick. I'm you nine. You are nine. Nine! Reckless you may be, but few contend your decision to land the first strike when the outcome is so conclusive. Just like nine, you, your spear is straight and true. It's, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Caleb has a nice straight spear. That's true. That's what the survey says. <laughs> He's so Caleb, seven. So. Caleb got a nine, yeah. All right. <sighs> All right, so this one's titled Final Fantasy XII International Zodiac Job System HD uh, from Immortal 142, a warrior. Let's see. Would you guys buy... <coughs> Caleb is God, sorry. <laughs> Would you guys buy an HD remaster of FF12's International Edition? Have it for PS2. You are right there, buddy? No. And he says he ad it adds a level of difficulty to FF12 by locking each character into a job of your choice. Hmm. For instance, he made Ma Van, well, a time mage, and that was a giant mistake, apparently. I'm Captain Bosch von Ronsenberg of Dalmaska. If they released an HD remaster for PS3 or 4, he'd buy it. Huh. What so, would we buy a remaster of <laughs> FF12's International Edition? Uh, I would like to buy... Uh, I want them to do it like they did with 10, where they have, like... Uh, the option? The, the option, yeah. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm sure they would do I'm that a little again. afraid of the international version, because I haven't tried it. But. Yeah, with 12's regular, we're kind of comfortable, so... Yeah. I think they should do it as a, just like 10s. Mm -hmm. That'd be easiest. So. Yeah, it would be. Uh, but yeah, I would definitely, any HD edition of 12, <laughs> if it has trophies, I would like to play it. 
That's for sure. All right, so this is Dirge of Cerberus' secret ending from Busy Bark, who is a guest on our forum. Make a real account. <laughs> <laughs> spoiler alert! Oh, there is a spoiler alert, and I have not beat Dirge of Cerberus. Is this really going to screw me up? No, it's a while. Okay. No. All right. The secret ending of Dirge of Cerberus has what looks like Genesis from Crisis Core sweeping up Whis and saying something along the lines of, it is not yet time to slumber, my brother, and then flying away on one wing. I can't possibly be alone in my desire to see where that leads for another title in the series. So as much as I'd love to see an HD remaster of 7, I for one am still waiting to see what happens after Dirge of Cerberus. Just wondering what your feelings are towards all of this. Um, Continuation I, of the compilation of Final Fantasy 7? Uh, maybe. I don't know. If it's a good game, sure, but yeah. I don't know. I mean, they're definitely teasing it if that's the secret ending. Yeah, I feel like they want to leave 7 as wide open as possible. So that they can just add games onto it. Yeah, they can just keep catching it. It'll probably in. happen at some time. I'm sure it will. I'd be okay with it, as long as it's a good game, yeah. honestly. We'd have to play it anyway. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Wouldn't matter if it was good or not. <laughs> All right, this one is from Crimson Command. It's titled course. Romance in Final Fantasy. In playing 10, there's a strong romance between Titus and Yuna. One of the better So they say. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Nice. One of the better in Final Fantasy, in my opinion. I used to like 8s, but I think 10 is stronger. How do you think Square handles romance? Do you like the majority of them? Which do you think is strongest? Um, Between 8, 9, and 10? Probably 10. 10s, yeah. I agree. I mean, it's, uh, it has the realistic stages. It's awkward in the beginning. <laughs> they accept it, and then it's really sad by the end when Titus disappears. Spoiler. It's always sad at the end. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I agree. I think Final Fantasy X probably has the best uh, love story out of all those. Um, I used to like Eights too, and you know what? For the time, Eights is not a bad love story. I mean, we talked about this on the review. Um, for the time? What, do they not have any love stories in 1999? Not in video games. <laughs> we already talked about this in, in the Final Fantasy VIII review. But uh, yeah, I do think Tens is stronger also. And Square handles romance... Okay. How does Square handle romance? Because I guess it really depends on the game, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Nines and tens are okay, but I eights just feels, I don't know, it feels like a stretch for a lot of it, yeah. which we talked about. So. Yeah, if Rosa and Cecil aren't that great. No. I think I think Square need, I think Square has some things to work on. Maybe that might be one of them. <laughs> well, I think a lot of it's creating female characters that matter, and then that makes the romance stronger. Yeah. Honestly. Yeah. All right, so this is Final Fantasy Cafe. This is from Gilgamesh on our forum, who is a black mage. I haven't seen one of those in a while. Okay. Uh, now, this might kind of go under the spot, the FF, but, uh, you know, we'll, we'll work it out here. Hey, guys. During my trip to Japan a few years ago, I visited the Artina Cafe, just uh, Artnia, sorry, Cafe, just outside of the Square Enix building. After my visit, I have always wished that Square Enix had cafes here in the States for Final Fantasy like they have in Japan, Eorzea Cafe and Artnia. I didn't even know about Artnia. Yeah, we talked about Eorzea. this one came time. up. Well, yeah, Eorzea when it was like announced that it was there or whatever. <coughs> uh, I, I would certainly love to go to either of these cafes. Uh, this got me thinking about what I would like to have for a Final Fantasy cafe if I were to, uh, to ever be lucky enough to be blessed by Square Enix to start my own. Hmm. Personally, I always thought it would be cool to do a cafe called Balam with throwbacks to FF8 and a few life-size sculptures of Squall and crew or even a summon like Shiva. Possibly serve the world-famous Balam hot dogs. I think Balam's futuristic and clean look would make a cool cafe. With that said, what would you guys want for your own FF-themed cafe? What would its name be? Sandwiches, drinks, art, life-size statues. What Final Fantasy would you like to base it off, or what city? All right. Um. Oh man. Wow. That's a interesting question. <laughs> that's a that's a question I should have thought about before getting here. Yeah. <laughs> um. Wow. Well, it's that is a good idea to do the the world of Final Fantasy eight. Although if I were a businessman, I would definitely, 
I would definitely base it on the Final Fantasy that made the most money. <laughs> so seven. So seven. Well, I guess eleven made the most money, but sold the most copies. Seven. Um. <coughs> yeah, as a businessman, I would definitely base it on Final Fantasy seven, and I would like a. What's that area where Eris dies in? What is that? It's like the city of the ancients or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that kind of feel. I think that's pretty cool. I like to use that. And then just like a bunch of Japanese dishes. Just in this <laughs> cool themed area. Yeah. All right. All right. Schweiss. Um while you're coughing your freaking lungs out. Yeah, there. I'm really dying this week. Sorry, guys. Uh let's see. What I would do I would kinda like to have one that has different dishes based on different entries in the series. Like we did that Tantalus sandwich mm-hmm. stuff like that but make it more themed to the game so like with 10 it would be kind of more of an islander kind of dish mm-hmm. with nines it would be like mm-hmm. some sort of medieval you know crude pig with a mm-hmm. you know apple in its mouth on the table <laughs> eight something futuristic sevens modern i guess sushi something like that mm. i think it'd be cool if they did that with like different uh different sections of the restaurant themed after different games well some of the games actually have food in it like final <laughs> fantasy 7 has a barbecue plate or whatever from the yeah there's a few dishes in one there. area yeah wall market if there was one game you could base it off of though i would say seven or ten <laughs> just because i like the atmosphere of ten as we talked about before yeah yeah uh but i i i I do completely agree with your idea, though. Just having a big, big Final Fantasy cafe. Yeah, with tons of different dishes. Yeah, and stuff. tons of different dishes, tons of different things on the wall. You know, a whole entire uh, plethora of Final Fantasy stuff. Yeah, yeah, I think that'd be cool. Uh, who would you would like to have a life size size statue of there? Probably Jet. Jet like mocking a tiny little statue of Titus' <laughs> child. You with a woman. Yeah. That'd be oh, cool. that'd be a good drop. It would. <laughs> I'll have to grab it for next time. Oh, I feel sad. Don't cry, Yazu. Sorry. <laughs> Since we now have drops, I have to use them all the time. <laughs> At least for one episode. All right. So, let's look and see what else we got here. All right. Okay, I'm going to save the FF11 uh, server thing for last because I do have an answer for it. Um, I forgot to answer it last time. Yeah. <laughs> save it for last so that you guys can remember. Okay. Dissidia Final Fantasy Arcade. This is another one from Gilgamesh. Uh, you want to read that twice? Or yeah. Can you read it without coughing? I don't know. Okay. <coughs> the answer is no, obviously. Hey, guys. I noticed in episode Bards vs. Cecil when you guys were talking about ultimate party around the 58 minute mark you mentioned wishing there was a way to facilitate a fight with a party of the characters this got me uh this got me thinking about the new dissidia arcade square enix is working on uh in this new dissidia you will be able to do a three-on-three fight the graphics look amazing and i'm really looking forward to playing from what i read uh, will be a reboot. Oh, and from what he read, it'll be a reboot. Mm-hmm. I also don't remember you guys covering this in the news section when the trailer was released because they didn't. Yeah. Uh, what do you guys think of the release of this release? We have no idea. <laughs> At the moment, it's just for arcades for Japan. Uh, do you think it will get released on the PS4 and make it outside of Japan? Do you have any? Well, fuck. Thing you I didn't wanted? hear anything about it. This you is my. It. This is the, the reading this earlier this week was like my first like. Uh... <laughs> Apparently it's an arcade game. Yeah, yeah it's so. an arcade game. I don't. I don't know. We do search for news before the before the show starts usually, and uh, it just never came up. Maybe there was a bigger piece of news when it was. Uh, yeah. When they had the trailer. All right. So he's saying personally, he hoped they would release a fighter game like Air Gaze with all the Final Fantasy characters, and was disappointed with the PSP Dissidia playstyle. But he says this one looks pretty sick. All right, and then he has the trailer below. So if you guys want to. Watch the trailer, you just go look that up while Caleb coughs his ass off. Why are you coughing so much, man? You choke on something? No, I'm sick. It's what happens when you're sick. You cough a lot. Well, you weren't coughing this entire morning until like halfway through this episode. Yeah, that's true. No, I'm not choking. It's just I have a really irritated throat from this mm, cold. Okay. All right, got another one from Crimson Command here. So I don't know if anyone noticed, but in the, in the variety of games Squall has been in, he has changed... 
uh, the most in appearance. I liked his style in FF8. The leather jacket was cool. In Kingdom Hearts, he was even better. He looked as if he had gone through training. He looked stronger and got even a cooler jacket. Then Dissidia came out and made him look kind of like a little bitch. Excuse my French. Did this bother any? Did this bother bother anyone else? Um, I do like, uh, as far as character design, I do think he looks best in Kingdom Hearts as Leon. Yeah. I don't know why they changed it. Like, why couldn't they call him Squall? Why'd they have to call him Leon? I don't know. That's weird. <laughs> it is weird. Um, I don't know. We haven't really played Dissidia, so. I've seen him in Dissidia. I don't think he looks like a little bitch, but, you know, he looks like Squall to me. I, I No, I don't think he's changed as much in appearance as Cloud has. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Of course, Squall's graphics were a little better. So. Well, yeah, they were a little better, but even in, like, the FMV sequences of a Final Fantasy VII, that, that doesn't look like the Advent Children Cloud. No, that's true. Yeah, they look completely different. And then the Kingdom Hearts edition of Cloud looks different, too. So yeah. I think I think Cloud was changed around more than Squall was. Yeah, I don't really mind how Squall looks. I don't really care. I mean... As long as he doesn't, they don't change his character a ton. Mm -hmm. A little, a little bit of change in his design is fine. Mm -hmm. All right. So this is an interesting question from Batman here. Who's an ultimate weapon, by the way? It's titled "Past, Present, and Future." Okay. What time period do you guys prefer your FF games to be set in? The NES and the SNES were mostly in the past with castle settings and themes. Occasionally, trips to the moon, notwithstanding. <laughs> Whereas the PS1 and PS2 era games had tried to find a balance between modern and futuristic locales, PS3 and PS4 games seem to have a focus on more futuristic settings. I personally like the FF games set in the past, as the games seem to be able to focus more <coughs> on story and character development, <laughs> as opposed to trying to teach the player about the world. Uh, he says, I would rather stick my wiener in a meat... What is with this, Batman? I would rather stick my wiener in a meat grinder than read data logs again. Well, what do you guys think? Past, present, or future? Hmm. hmm. That's an interesting question. Okay, for uh, let's say Final Fantasy 16, do you want it to be more of a... Like a Final Fantasy 1 through 5 thing, a Final Fantasy 6, 7, 8 thing, or... <laughs> or Final Fantasy 13 thing. I'd kind of rather do a throwback, like a one through five. Yeah, you think it's time for a throwback? Yeah, and nice 14 is not enough of a throwback. A nice medieval uh, <laughs> style. Well, 14 is not a single player game. There, you're right. 14 is not a single player game, which is probably why Batman didn't mention it. But uh, no, 14 is kind of set in the past. It's yeah, it like is. That. It's true. It's kind of got that uh, old, old time environment. I think it'd be cool to see what they would do with it with modern graphics and gameplay elements. I don't know. Oh, that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, that's where most of uh, most of Western fantasy RPGs are based. Yeah, they're usually like in the kind past. of medieval kind of setting. Yeah. So it would be interesting to see a Final Fantasy go back there after you know so many years, a single yeah. player Final Fantasy. Um, ten is definitely not there. Ten's not there. Nine is there. Um, Mostly, but you know, with its genetics, yeah, <laughs> genetic engineering. Okay, this this one is from Void. Uh, epic moments, epic moment in Final Fantasy. He says, "You or me, Schweiss." I'll read it. Okay. I recently blasted through the FF15 demo in one sitting and loved every minute of it. When I got to use the summon for the first time, I thought it was one of the most epic things I've ever seen in a video game. Mm. It got me thinking. Final Fantasy is a huge series with many epic moments. In your opinion, what is the most epic moment in a Final Fantasy game? Wow, that's a big question. Yeah, it really is. Uh, <laughs> I'm really tempted to say that Ramu is the most epic thing because it, it is the... It's the Final Fantasy moment I've had most recently where I've just been like, whoa. Yeah. Holy crap. You know, that kind of thing. I think Orphan coming up, you didn't get there in, in Final Fantasy thirteen. the final fight in Final Fantasy thirteen. that was a pretty big epic kind of moment there. Uh, I think Terra saving everybody at the end of six. <laughs> it's a big epic ending. 
I don't know, Schweiss. Uh, I would Epic say moment. Kafka blowing up the world in six. <laughs> that that would be another Just one. Wreaking havoc. Mm-hmm. Um, there was a there was a moment. There's there's kind of these moments where <laughs> Final Fantasy will like shock you, you know, a little bit. Like whoa, like I didn't I didn't expect this to happen. So, and those usually tend to be those big epic moments. And I'm I'm thinking of Final Fantasy VII right now, in which. Uh, you have your first flashback with Cloud, and, and he's in the party with Sephiroth, and then you get in your first battle, and then Sephiroth does does, does massive damage. You know, yeah. I I remember that being a moment that kind of like went, <laughs> I kind of kind of sat back and I was like, oh geez, <laughs> I'm gonna kill this guy. Yeah. <laughs> so there was that, and then when Seymour, <laughs> your first fight with Seymour, and he releases Anima. And if you actually get Anima, if you if you suck as much as I did the first time I played ten, and Anima gets to it gets to its overdrive, and then it like destroys you. Yeah, that part's really really epic. That summons just really epic Anima. It's true, it's a yeah. great one. Um, I don't know. Those ones are pretty good ones. Uh, the I don't know. A lot of stuff in seven is pretty intense. Like when you find out that cloud's been you know he's not actually part of the story as much as you think he is it's been zach for part of it the part where tifa's in his memory yeah yeah that part's awesome there's that and then there's the world getting blown up there's mm-hmm. um i don't know with eight there really wasn't that much <laughs> yeah, there's nine the the epicness of Bahamut getting destroyed by alexander mm-hmm. was pretty sweet thinking of Bahamut and advent children that's a pretty epic moment yeah, yeah. <laughs> Not the jumping up to him necessarily, but the his summon and the mm-hmm. summon itself is pretty sweet. Mm-hmm. Yeah, summons I would probably say is the biggest one, and then just big plot twists like we mentioned. Mm-hmm. Pretty epic moments. They are pretty epic, and I'd say just uh, if you haven't played the fifteen demo, man, get a hold of it. It's great because yeah. that Ramu summon, if anything, it's all worth it. Oh yeah, especially on my big TV. <laughs> let's talk about my tv some more all right our last question is from shinru and this is a question i said i was going to answer on the last episode and then didn't listen our last episode was our first live episode ever and so and we're still kind of like figuring this out i mean this is kind of yeah. scary to not have any stops for us because usually we stop it and then kind of go from there uh so we forgot to answer that question I had pulled up, and we also forgot to do news, which is super embarrassing. This question, a very, very important question, by the way. Uh, this comes from Shinru. He's a Tifa and I, we have a thing on our forum. <laughs> I know there are different servers on Final Fantasy XI, and I was curious which one you guys will be playing on, so we all know not to join another server before we start playing, because it costs like 18 bucks to switch over. Um, <clears throat> he didn't say that, but I, I said that. I looked it up, and it seems that Odin, Ashura, and Bahamut are the most popular servers with the most people, so it might be good to join Ashura or Odin. Uh, Bahamut is the biggest one. Uh, it has the most active players. I looked it up last night. Also, how the hell do we go about signing up for FF11? It's crazy that you have to create a Square Enix account, an 11 account, an 11 Play Online account, and some other ID FF online account, and linking them. Ugh, it's so confusing. How did you ever do it, Joe? Any tips? <laughs> There's guides online. <laughs> I kid you not. Uh, the first, the easiest thing to do is just. Uh, Get on Square Enix's site and set up, a, become a member on Square Enix, and everything is kind of from there. So you create, you get a ID, a character ID from Square Enix. Uh, FF11 during its install will lie to you about play online. Listen to the Square Enix official site, and not uh, not whatever play online says to you. It is a big pain in the butt. <laughs> It's, really? Yeah, FF11 would be so much easier if you could just sign up there. But if you are if you have a 14 account, uh, your play online, I believe, is the same as your 14 account, but I could be wrong there. Never mind. Just look it up online. Uh, honestly, I can't, I can't tell you over this thing how to do it because last time I did it, it was a pain in the butt. The first time I did it, it was a pain in the butt. It was much worse, actually. Um, <laughs> yeah, you're going to have to be a Square Enix member, um, which is free. 
But yeah. uh, getting a character ID is not free. Nope. Nope. So you got to get that character ID, and then you take that character ID, and then you like link it up with your Final Fantasy XI. Um, so yeah. <laughs> uh, all right. Oh, and wh- you guys said you will be playing at nine, uh, nine Mountain Standard Time, nine o'clock Mountain Standard Time. Was that AM or PM? I hope it was AM. It's not. God, why would it be AM? <laughs> uh. By the way, I know some of the listeners are from other countries, and I found out on PC that you can be from any country as long as you are on the same server. You can play with Japanese, Australian, UK, European, North American players. So this is good news for any any uh, listeners from other countries. Yes, uh, that's that's true. All right, so I'm gonna real quick find my player ID, and uh, I'll tell you exactly where to go to add me. Schweiss has not yet signed up for eleven. So, uh, not yet. Yeah, soon not, though. Soon. Not yet. Okay. UFF listeners unite. Final Fantasy Eleven. Add me on Final Fantasy Eleven. <coughs> okay. My FF Eleven account name. The handle is Nuborius. N O O B O R I O U S. Okay. You can find me on Final Fantasy Fourteen the same way. In Final Fantasy XIV, I'm Nuborius Caesar, as okay. in Julius Caesar, Nuborius Caesar, okay? Uh, the ID for Final Fantasy XI, my player ID, is 00-4778774. Lot of fours, lots of sevens, lots of eights, okay? And my handle is Nuborius. Uh, the world that we are in, the server that we are in, is Siren which is the sixth most populated server I found out last night. So it's still relatively populated. Uh, So that's the information I have for you to be able to find us. If you want to join our team speak while we play the game, uh, there's information on the forums about that. Uh, It's in the FF listeners unite, I believe. Yeah. There's a, there's a team speak channel. There's a team speak channel thread. Yeah. Yeah. So go look that up. Uh, this week is the week to install 11. That's that's for sure. And if you want to switch over, there is a world transfer service that Square Enix has. If you want to come over to Siren to play with us, that'd be great. Now, our plan is that we will always be on Monday, Wednesday, Friday at 9 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. Correct. However, we are planning to play more than that. <laughs> Uh, we are planning to be on more often than that, so you can always just see if we're on on our Twitch channel, which yeah. is Ultima Final Fantasy. Yeah, I'll be streaming that, and then Ultima Final Fantasy with no spa- uh, with no spaces. And then we'll also be on the Teamspeak probably. So mm-hmm. yeah, so we'll be on Teamspeak uh, if, if anything. So this is the week to install Final Fantasy XI. <laughs> it's a big game. And figure out how to get in there. Make sure you join the World Siren. Okay, Siren and Schweiss, you need to do the same thing. I do. Now, you can get the Steam version, I believe, the bullshit version, which when I say bullshit, I mean it has everything in it, every all the expansions and everything. Mm-hmm. I think on Steam, it's $40. On Amazon, I believe it's 30 Okay. So, I know it won't be connected to your Steam account, uh, but you have to connect through another service anyway to get into Final Fantasy XI. Uh, but it's ten dollars cheaper on Amazon, so go download it off of Amazon. Don't use Steam, not not right now anyway. Unless there's some kind of like stay a sale in the next week. Yeah, yeah. All S- right, sweet, sweet. Uh, all right. So yeah, Newborius zero zero dash four seven seven eight seven seven four, and uh, <laughs> the world that we're on is Siren. <coughs> all right, you guys. Well, I think that's probably. <coughs> gonna end it for this episode uh make sure you guys support us on patreon so that we can uh (coughs) we're slowly saving up money to get a new mixer and uh if you what is it three dollars or more you'll get a well you'll get a main like a big episode dedicated to you so those who haven't gotten episode dedications we're waiting for reviews and next week is our final fantasy 10 review so if you have any 10 questions you want to put on the forum that you haven't already put Make sure to put them on there this week before Saturday morning. Yep. Yep. So. 
Wrong jingle. <laughs> Dumbass. Whoops. So, uh, we'll see you guys next week. Enjoy the grind. This has been another production of Ultima Final Fantasy, the ultimate Final Fantasy podcast. The show was produced by Joseph de Gaulier and Caleb Schweiss with music and editing by Joseph de Gaulier, parodies and clips from their respective authors, of course. You can get all of our episodes as well as our Let's Plays at ultimafinalfantasy.com. You can also contact us on Twitter at UFF Podcast as well as our contact page on our website. Be sure to subscribe and review our podcast. Your reviews may get read on the show and look forward to the next episode of Ultima Final Fantasy, the ultimate Final Fantasy podcast.